Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in this series of tutorials, we'll see how to build a Reddit clone application using Spring Boot and Angular. We will be using Spring Boot, Spring MVC, Spring Security with JWT authentication, Spring Data JPA with MySQL database to build this application. So without wasting any time, let's have a look at the application we are going to build. As I said before, we are building a Reddit clone. So Reddit is of course a very popular website that needs no introduction. And this is how our homepage looks like. I have copied some of the CSS from Reddit to provide a similar look and feel for our application. We have our header section with the Reddit icon on the left side and the login and sign up buttons on the right side. We have our homepage where you can see different links which are posted by the users. Each post has a voting section where you can either upvote or downvote a post. You can also see there is a comment section here which shows how many comments are there for each post. You can click on read post button to see the post and uh, comments for this post. If you want to create a post, you need to be logged in. So first let me register quickly by clicking on sign up button and providing my details. And once you click on register button, we are navigated to the login page. You can also see a nice toaster notification here on the top right side. So after the user registration, we have to activate the account before we log in. For that, we receive an email to, uh, which contains uh, the activation link for the account. In this application, I'm actually using a fake SMTP server called as MailTrap instead of a real world mail server. So all the mails which we sent from our application are sent to this MailTrap inbox. Uh, you can see that we have already received an email with subject as please activate your account and uh, here as I am using a free account uh, we can only see the text version of this email even though we are sending an HTML template as the as the email body. So let's copy this activation link inside this email and open this in the new tab and you can see that our account is activated successfully. Now we should be able to log in. Let's go back to our login page, type our credentials and click on login. So now we are navigated to the home page. So first let's create a subreddit and then create a post inside the subreddit. I will click on create subreddit button, give a title and description for the subreddit and click on post. Now let's create the post. I will provide the title. By the way, if you like this kind of tutorials, uh, I have already created a tutorial previously which shows you how to build a simple blog application using Spring Boot and Angular. You can have a look at that tutorial inside the description section. So I would be doing some self promotion here and will post that as my first link. I will give some random text as description and click on post. So you can see that we are navigated back to the home page and this time you can see the post we have just created. It uh, shows the time as just now. Now let's log in as a different user. And in the home page, I can upvote or downvote this post we have just created before. Uh, so uh, let's upvote this and uh, you can see that the upvote icon now turns to green. And uh, even if you reload the page, it shows a visual indication that the user has upvoted this post. Uh, the same thing applies also of course for the downvote of the post. And the last thing is uh, as you can see on the top right section, we have our username. If you click on that, we see a menu and let's click on profile. And in this page, you can see all the posts and comments which are created by the user. So that is how our application looks like. And uh, the next step would be to actually start coding. I will be first developing the backend and then we will see how to develop the front end. So to create the backend project, so the first thing you have to do is to go to start.spring.io website. This is the place where you will uh, generate our project with all the required dependencies. For this project, we will add uh, Spring Web as uh, we are using Spring MEC. We will add a very useful library called as Lombok. This library helps us to generate the usual boilerplate code in Java, like uh, getters, setters, uh, constructors, equals hash code methods, etc. And the next thing is, uh, we also need Spring Security, Spring Data JPA, MySQL Java driver. And lastly, we will also add Java mail sender uh, dependency. Once this is done, you can click on generate and uh, and the source code will be downloaded to your machine. Uh, now let's unzip the project and open it in your favorite IDE. I will be using IntelliJ for the rest of the backend development for this project. And for the front end, I will be using Visual Studio Code. So I opened the project in IntelliJ. Now the first step would be to create the domain entities for our application. 
So let's expand this package structure and go to the root package. And inside this package, I already created two packages called as model and repository. Inside the model package, we have all the domain entities we are need for our application. The first one is the post entity. It contains a field post. It contains a field post ID, which is annotated with ID and generated value with a strategy of identity. Next, we have a field name, which has at not blank annotation. So when we validate this entity before saving it to the database, if at all the name field is either empty or null, we will get a validation error with the message as post name cannot be empty or null. Next, we have the field URL, which can be nullable, followed by the description field, which can also be nullable and is annotated with uh, lob annotation because we can have large chunk of text stored inside this uh, description section. We also have a vote count for the post followed by a reference to the user of the post. We have many to one relationship here and a join. Uh, and lastly, we are storing the time at which the post is created through the created date field. And uh, this field is of type instant. And uh, also we have a reference to the subreddit entity with a many to one relationship and a join. One thing you may have observed here is we don't have the usual boilerplate code for this entity like the getters, setters and constructors. Because these are generated automatically at compile time using the library called as Lombok. The first annotation we are using here is at data annotation. This is responsible to mainly generate the getters and setters for our class. It also does some other things. If you're interested, you can check the documentation for this annotation. And the next we have a JPA annotation entity followed by the all aux and no aux constructor annotation, which generates the constructors for the class. And we also have a builder annotation, which will generate the builder methods for our class. This annotation mainly uses the famous builder design pattern to create the objects for a class with the data. You can check the link in the description to know more about this uh, builder pattern. Before we go any further to enable Lombok in your IDE, you have to install Lombok plugin. Uh, you can do that by pressing Ctrl Shift A and typing plugins. And inside the plugin window, search for Lombok and make sure you install this plugin and restart the IDE. After that, press Ctrl Shift A again and type enable annotation processing. Just make sure that this checkbox is activated and click on OK. By doing this, IntelliJ will detect the Lombok annotation and generate the related code at uh, compile time. If you are using any other ID, I have added a link in the description to the Lombok website. There you can find step-by-step -step instructions on how to enable Lombok on your favorite ID. The next entity is subreddit. We have the usual fields here, the ID, name, Description, a reference to the list of posts with one to many relationship, the created date field, and reference to users with many to one relationship. The user entity has the user ID, name, password, email, created date, and enable fields. So here the user is enabled after completing the email verification process. Which brings us to the verification token entity. Whenever a user is registered, we generate a token we store it in the database through this entity and send this token as part of the activation link to the user. Whenever the user clicks on that link, we look up the user associated with this token and enable that user. We will discuss this functionality in detail in the next upcoming videos. And next we have the vote entity, which stores the votes by the user. We distinguish whether a vote is either upvote or downvote using an enum called as vote type. This enum has two possible values, upvote and downvote. And of course, we have references to the post and user entities, and both of them has many to one relationship. That leaves us with the last domain entity, comment. It has an ID, text, a reference to the post and the user with the many to one relationships for both of them and a join. And we have the timestamp at which the comment is created through the created date field of type instant. So the next step would be to create repositories to store these entities inside the database. I have already created the repository package and all the interfaces we need. So let's go through them one by one. First of all, we have the post repository, which is extending the JPA repository, which is taking the post and uh, the long as uh, generic arguments. Post is of course our entity and long is the type of our primary key. And uh, this uh, interface is annotated with at repository annotation. Next, we have the subreddit repository, which is also extending the JPA repositories and uh, taking subreddit and long as generic arguments, followed by the user repository. And next we have a word repository. 
And lastly, we have the comment repository. Now let's configure the database in our project. For that, open the application.properties file inside the source main resources package and add the following properties. The first one is the property for MySQL driver class name. We will use the driver class of the com MySQL CJ JDBC package. The next property is the data source URL. We will provide the JDBC URL of our database schema. We will see how to create this shortly using MySQL Workbench. Next up, we have our username and password of the database, followed by the Hibernate dialect property. Here, as we are using MySQL database version 8, we are providing the MySQL 5 InnoDB dialect as the value for this property. Next up, we have our DDL auto property. Uh, I'm going at the value as update for now, but if you're developing a production grade application, you will uh, give it a value of none and perform all your database changes through migration scripts using libraries like Flyway or Liquibase. Just take a note of this point. And lastly, we have the initialize and show SQL properties as true. Now, before we run our application, we have to make sure that the schema already exists in your database. Here we have provided the schema name as Spring Reddit clone. Now let's open MySQL Workbench. And once you are connected to the local database, in the bottom left side corner of the screen, you can find the schema section. Just right click over there and select Create Schema. As I have already created the schema, I won't be creating it again. Just make sure to add the schema name here and click on Finish to create the schema. And also make sure you put the same schema name inside the Spring configuration back inside the application.properties file. Now that should be it for the initial setup. If you go back to IntelliJ and go to the main class, the Spring Reddit clone application class, just click on the green arrow to the left side and click on debug. This should start up the Spring context and the Tomcat server at port 8080. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next video, we will see how to configure Spring security and add registration functionality to our application. If you like this video, please do subscribe for my channel for more interesting tutorials like this. So I will see you later and until then, happy coding.